this kind of segues into something I wanted to talk about now that I have a beautiful audience. Uh, I want to show you guys a clip and it's going to be kind of weird, but once you see it, I'll explain it and then it'll make sense in the end. And so I don't know if you know anything about chess. You don't really have to, but we'll walk through this clip real quick. All right, and the game just got started, so we're expecting to see a scotch from XQC. Do you have any insights on how you think uh, Moist Critical? This is probably one of the most hyped um, chess things I've ever know. seen. I think by Charlie's the way. been maybe looking at the Sicilian defense, is my guess, but I don't actually. Okay, he plays the E5. Okay, so XQC is going to get his uh, get his scotch opening here. I think. Let, let's let's watch. Let's see. All right, and um, if he does get it, then he will be familiar. So he's probably pretty happy to have seen E5. I think. C5 may have put him a bit less in his comfort zone. Right. I, I so, think E4, E5 is what a lot of players right are Right now they're doing a pretty standard opening, opening, right? So XQC is doing this trade like and doing this. XQC trained to do uh, this opening. Now, voice critical plays Bishop C5, which is not a move that I like here. If the system is completely fine at an advanced level, I'm worried about the plan, the process here, because when you bring out the Bishop like this, uh, it can become very vulnerable right away. So I'm not sure that I like the like the variational approach here? No, please don't. And it's too soon. It's too soon, Nikaru. <laughs> so if you've played you chess, you know what's about to happen. And you know why XQC fucked up royally here. And you can see Moist Critical celebrating. He gets this checkmate right here. You know when I said it'd be fun to see a checkmate in 4 earlier? I was, I was joking. It was... Uh, it wasn't r real. Yep, L got a super early checkmate. Right now. Beat him in Daniel this Pachamps tournament. Is a prophet. He said immediately that XQC will likely go with the Scotch Open, and he did. So I had the counterplay, and he immediately blundered. Well, that's got to be a world record. Yeah, that's got to be awful. Pikachu. Mike is throbbing. <laughs> throbbing. What is one of the chess? one of the most amazing quotes in all of chess and Twitch history, man. Thanks for the fat 10 gift subs, Pikachu. Mike is throbbing. <laughs> throbbing. What is so, this? just to break it down a little bit, right? So, Moist Critical had been practicing for this tournament under a pro, right? And XQC had been also practicing under a pro. And that pro had taught XQC an opening called a scotch, which is what you saw here. <laughs> yeah, that's not a phrase I'd expect in a chess tournament either, but it's pretty sick. He was popping off. So XQC was taught the scotch, and the GM that taught Moist Critical for this tournament taught him this clever opening right here to move his queen and threaten this square. Now, XQC made what appeared to be a very logical move, right? Because right before this, if I can back up, right before this, he had his knight in this square, threatened by both the queen, the bishop, and the knight. And so he thought to himself, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this knight, right? And I'm gonna start trading out, and then we're gonna kind of simplify this board a little bit and move on, right? But by doing so, he put himself in a checkmate in one scenario. So I wanted to talk about this because it's the prime example of a knowledge check, but specifically, it's an example of a knowledge check where a player has done their research to defeat a specific move. And that comes up a lot in video games, right? If you think about it, like Gruta Impacts, something like that is a very simple thing where the Potemkin player has knocked you down and he puts you in Gruta Impact. And now you have to decide what you want to do. And there's a cool mechanic that creates situations like this. And I'm going to show it to you. But why are knowledge checks good, right? Well, in my opinion, right, it develops a complex interaction with the other player and it allows you to disrupt the flow of gameplay for your opponent. And it also allows you to create strategies where you develop a situation where the other opponent doesn't know what they're doing. Just like that XTC clip. Yeah, let's go. Impact. 
do the simple Groot impact, right? And a lot of you have seen this interaction because it's one of the interactions that became super popular specifically for Guard Crush, right? So he's gonna come up and he's gonna knock me down. If I can time it right. We clash, right? So typically, if the Potemkin player doesn't know what they're doing, and I'm not a Papagi. Damn, I suck. I can do this and get a counter hit. So if they don't know it's coming, then that's what happens, right? But this develops, uh, develops a very complex interaction that the Potemkin also gets to do things after the Clash. And what's cool about this Clash is that now Potemkin players, like Snake Eyes, are starting to learn what to do after this move. So let's take the same situation, right? But I had a Paw Buster at the end of it. So now we've created a, another layer to this knowledge check where at one point I was knowledge checking the Potemkin, right? And I was doing far slash after his Garuda. So because I had been teaching myself to do this and running directly into the Pod Buster, right? Snake Eyes had started doing this Pod Buster tech right after the Clash. So now what I have to do is do the Clash into FD if I don't suck. Let's get, uh, let's get this side. So I FD'd, and then I got the backdash by accident that time after the FD. But because I FD'd, now I can call out his pop buster. And when he does that, I, he gets counter hit, right? So then he starts developing a different tech entirely. And this is probably the most complex interaction I've seen so far because it creates a really shitty situation. So instead what he's gonna start doing is this. And now I get pop bustered, guaranteed. I can't even PRC. So the reason I'm bringing all this up is because by adding these levels of complexity to a game, right? In a game like chess, when you knowledge check somebody, they can sit there and they can think about something for a long time. So while the, the parallel is there, it's a little different because you have so much time to work with. But a game like Guilty Gear is more like a game of blitz chess where you only get two or three minutes tops to think about what you're doing and make a decision. So in situations like this, where it comes down to making decisions in seconds and you know even frames, right? You can create situations for yourself where you develop an advantage by understanding the layers of interaction that go into something like this. So while Snake Eyes is sitting over here doing this thing, right? And he knocks me down and he does this DP and I I get PRC Buster, right? So while Snake Eyes is doing that, what it allows me to do is now I can just, you know, not do anything. I can backdash and wake up or I can do whatever I want. It creates a whole other layer of rock, paper, scissors that requires more guesswork from the Potemkin where before all Potemkin had to do was walk up 2D and Garuda me, right? So it's like really simple for Potemkin in that way, but now I've made layers and layers and layers of interaction with this Potemkin that he has to think about every time he knocks me down. Yeah, when you don't get to interact with Pot, yeah, yeah. It's true, if you don't have a DP in this specific scenario, it's kind of rough, but you know, Geo gets to do similar things too, right? Like when you do 214K, and then uh, if I try to press far slash, you just do your DP. And then you basically get to combo me because I made a mistake, right? So you get to add layers of interaction even to your negative moves, um, and which is really important, especially in tournament settings, right? Because if I have something like this and the Potemkin's not ready for my knowledge check, I can instantly win. Um, so like, it just comes from the place where one of the things that I believe about fighting games is when you have to deal with an interaction like this, I I was getting hit by this knockdown into Gruda, right? And I was thinking, man, this shit is cheap. This is mad cheap. What am I supposed to do? So I started DP and it clashed. And I was like, oh, what can I do after the clash? What can I do here to try and turn this into an advantage for me? 
Um, and so, like, whenever you're struggling with something, and everybody always says if you struggle with something or you get beat by something, you know, go to the dojo and try to figure it out a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But especially for situations like this where you might not have had a interaction that you could win, uh, but now you do because you've created so many complex interactions within it that the other player now has to guess on their own advantage, right? Uh, if you enjoyed this little discussion, I do have YouTube at Symbolist, uh, and you can like and subscribe there to follow all my content. I post random ramblings or uh, different reviews of stuff, and I do a challenge every week where I try to get the Celestial from floor six using nothing but fundamentals. Uh, you can find me there, and for all the YouTube guys, you can find me at uh, twitch.tv, the underscore Symbolist underscore. And I hope you follow me for more content. Thanks.